I'm Claire Brennan. And Laura Caffrey. And we own our design shop. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we're about makers ourselves, we're about make jewellery, we studied metalwork at NCAD and uh, we wanted to set up somewhere to sell our work that was solely selling Irish designed make products, really. Yeah, I suppose that we could have a shop and workshops in, so that's where the whole concept came from, you know. And, and we knew other people around, the, around Dublin and around the country were making really interesting things and there was nowhere really suitable to sell it, so we really wanted to be able to promote those people's work as well. Yeah. You know? We source the work all over Ireland and we travel around the country looking at, at people's work and visiting studios. People approach us as well. So basically we're selling Irish designed work that's not twee and that Irish people would actually want to buy. The Irish products are good enough to compete with the international market now, you know, so it's, it's not, it doesn't look Irish, you know, but still a lot of it is still using traditional methods or traditional uh, materials. Traditional skills, yeah. 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 We've got our own workshop upstairs where we teach uh, classes, so we sometimes get to do our own work. Um, we teach jewellery making classes at the weekends and make your own wedding ring classes. And then uh, on the next floor we have a shared studio where there's uh, four people working, three jewellers and a fashion designer. My name is Christina Kyo and I am a jewellery maker. I trained as an archaeologist um, and in art history uh, before this um, and so a lot of my designs are kind of influenced by uh, my background. I generally make things from sterling silver and gold um, and I'll incorporate um, freshwater pearls and I'll also uh, put in some um, maybe uh, precious stones as well. I've worked in an office for years and years and um, there was just something missing. <laughs> um, I just love creating. Um, I love starting from nothing and then creating something um, that can be worn, cherished, you know, it's going to, it's going to last a long time, there'll be a longevity to this and my pieces and I just, I love creating and, you know, actually having something physical to, you know, hold in your hand. Um, I've always wanted to do something with my hands, art, uh, whatever, um, but I never got kind of around to it and I finally trained and now I'm doing something that I love doing. I think to some people it probably is painstaking, but to me it's not. I kind of almost find it therapeutic in a strange sort of a way. Um, yes, yeah, some people it probably wouldn't be their cup of tea, but I, I love it because it's, yeah, it's, it's, I c I'm creating something and it's, uh, you know, it's, there's artistic, it's also artistic license involved, you know, you can make what you want. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'll be doing. It's all different, it's all, it all has its own character and even one person trying to you know, um, emulate someone else, they're still going to have their, their own sort of take on things or even how you hold your tools will, will have an uh, influence on the finished look of a piece. Culture Night's going to be great. Um, it's, I'm going to kind of demystify um, making, uh, the making of jewellery. I'm really looking forward to people coming in and, and having a chat and yeah, it's, um, it's really great because you're, sometimes you're kind of squirrelled away in a studio um, in your own little world and you kind of forget what you're actually doing and you're trying to make things you know, for other people to, to buy and love. Um, so yeah, it'll be really nice to sort of talk to the public and, and just show them what goes on in a jeweller's workshop. been involved in Culture Night since 2010? Yeah. No, 2009. 2009, yeah. So we used to we used to open up our studios on Bow Lane East, but now on Drury Street. This is our first year to have a Culture Night in Drury Street. Yeah. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah, and it's a great neighbourhood to be in and there's so much happening around this area. You know, we're, we're quite fortunate that way. Should be a lot of people down. Yeah. Yeah. 
We're going to have the studios open upstairs and we're going to have our artists and residents doing some jewellery demonstrations. So traditional jewellery skills, but we'll also have um, 3D printer 3D Dave in and he will be printing on demand for people. So he can print people's names, make them independents. So we just wanted to showcase new technology and traditional skills. Um, in the same space. So people can wander through the building, um, we might have a few beers, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs>printing is an additive technology so going to the opposite for instance it's called subtractive where if you have a block of metal or a block of wood you'll be cutting away at it to actually create the actual object with this you're actually adding layer upon layer so roughly how this works is you have plastic that goes into the back this is free mill PLA plastic there's a step motor here that has a cog on it and the cog has teeth on it that bites into the actual plastic and forces it over the top. This is called a Bowden tube. There's an aluminium block here that's heated to 210 degrees, so it actually melts the plastic, so it's just like a glorified hot glue gun. You have step motors here and here that actually does the X and Y, and there's one underneath the bed that brings the bed down. So how it actually works is it does one layer and then the bed comes down, and then another layer, and then another layer, and so on, and that's actually how it builds the 3D model. Well, one of the main limitations is, is temperature. For instance, you can create a cup and you can drink out of it, but if you put hot water in it or hot liquid, it gets very soft. So that's one of the biggest limitations. Apart from that is size. Um, this can actually print at 21 centimeters cubed. Anything bigger than that, you have to do it either in segments or just print it on a bigger printer, I guess. so you can print just about anything you like. Um, things I've printed are robots, of course. Everyone loves robots. Um, I've actually done chain mail. Uh, I've actually done some prototypes um, where I work. Are vases, um, customized name tags or necklaces and stuff. A little while ago, I broke the um, handle off our rice cooker. So instead of going and buying a new rice cooker, I just modeled up a new handle. Um, it gets a bit soft when you're halfway through the actual cooking process, but it, it's all right. And it even made its, wa it, its way through the dishwasher once. It got a bit wonky and it survived for another few months and then it fell apart. But then you just print off a new one and just carry on again. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of um, use of things you can also build as well. take probably about 10 minutes and I'll be able to model it up here and, and print it off you okay. while you wait. Well, it all mixes, it all works together though, you know. Um, I think some view that the 3D printing and that sort of technology is sort of taking away from the traditional skills, but I think they can work together, you know, and uh, complement each other. Yeah, new technologies, it's just really seen as another tool in your toolbox, you know? Like, there's people who reinterpret traditional skills and there's people who are using new technologies and it's all just one of the same thing, it's all good design. You know, just the way of producing it, it differs. Yeah.